healthcare facilities, educational institutions, um, governmental bodies, and so forth. And in particular, you know, we asked you know, whether there should be a build-out requirement to um, build out infrastructure to community anchor institutions. For instance, through the connection of, uh, through the construction of lateral connections to regional fiber networks. Um, should that be supported through the Connect America Fund, or should that, you know, instead be supported through, for instance, the E-Rate program or the Rural Health Care program? Um, we also asked, um, you know, whether there should be any specific obligations on the recipients of universal service funding to serve anchor institutions, and, you know, how you would weigh and measure those. Um, we also asked a number of questions about how you would define unserved areas. The notice proposed to use census blocks, um, as I said, on the NTI map to identify unserved areas. And when I say unserved, I mean unserved with broadband, um, you know, meaning a, a minimal threshold or internet access, a minimal threshold of 768. So I'm, I'm not talking about underserved areas. I'm talking about areas that have basically nothing. Um, but one of the questions we asked is, you know, how can we also account for unserved anchor institutions? How would you identify them? Um, and how can we get better information about that? We also asked questions about um, whether there should be support for middle mile networks. And we also asked whether the proposal to provide support only to one entity in a given geographic area, what impact that would have on anchor institutions today that may be receiving um, you know, support through the E-rate program or the rural health care program, which um, under today's program requires that um, the recipient of the fundings basically put out um, their request for a competitive bidding process. And last but not least, we also asked about you know, the overall size of the Connect America Fund compared to the other universal service programs and how we should weigh and balance the relative size of those programs. I should note that the commission made clear that it overall is seeking to constrain the overall size of the Universal Service Fund in total, um, which is the first slide, first slide indicated the overall Universal Service uh, Fund last year was about $7.9 billion. Um, and, you know, the commission has sought comment on capping or maintaining at the current levels each of the components of the fund that are uncapped today. The E-rate program already is subject to a cap, and the rural health care program also is already subject to a cap. Portions of the high cost program today already are capped, and in the notice of proposed rulemaking relating to the Connect America Fund, the FCC specifically sought comment on whether it should impose caps on the remaining portions of the Connect America, uh, I should say, the remaining portions of the high cost fund that are not capped today. And just uh, several weeks ago, the FCC also released a notice of proposed rulemaking relating to the low income program and also sought comment on whether it should impose any budgetary cap on that program as well. So one of the questions is in this time of, you know, obviously, you know, an overall, you know, soaring national deficit and concern about the cost and expenditure at all levels of government, you know, the agency is looking very hard at how we can work within the confines of our existing budget and not expand that budget because we're very cognizant of the fact that the funds that support the Universal Service Fund at the end of the day are recouped from consumers across the country and that has a real world impact as well. So those are the major questions that we're wrestling with. Um, this last slide basically gives some of the key dates um, for the public comment period for the Connect America Fund. Um, the general comment period uh, is comments are due on uh, April 18th, and the reply comments are due on May 23rd. Um, the final rules uh, will follow. Um, some of you may have heard that you know just last week all five commissioners jointly authored a blog which was posted on the FCC's website which indicated their unanimous desire to move forward swiftly on this proceeding um, and their commitment to actually you know, moving to an order in the months ahead. Uh, we actually are also actively working on setting up um, several workshops, public workshops. The first one will be next week on inner care compensation issues. The second one is scheduled for later in April in Washington. And the final workshop is going to be in May in a location outside of Washington, D.C., 
We're very much hoping to get input um, through the formal record process, but also through the informal ex parte process. We're in the process now of having ex parte meetings, you know, in-person meetings at the FCC with any interested parties that want to come in and basically give us a preview of what they plan to submit in their formal comments, and we expect that will continue as well. So there's a lot going on in this proceeding. And I wanted to leave this audience with, uh, you know, a specific request, which is that, you know, we'd like your help and your input, and you know, individually and collectively through um, this organization, you can be of great assistance to us, both in terms of providing us with real-world data and information about the impact of the rule changes that we have already um, put in place as they unfold. Um, what you, for instance, um, you know, to the extent that you have any information about um, schools, you know, bidding on and you know selecting certain providers so that they're getting more fiber in the coming funding year, that's the kind of information that would be very useful to us as well as real world, you know, information about the lack of critical infrastructure for healthcare providers and is it an issue of facilities do not exist or there are, in fact, services that um, you know, are in a particular geographic area, but it's a question of price, that the price, for whatever reason, is too exorbitant for a healthcare provider to support given um, you know, the needs of the community. So we also are looking for some very specific, actionable recommendations on how we should measure and think about you know, the role of anchor institutions as we're going through these reforms because, it, you know, it's one of those things where we can all agree upon the importance of anchor institutions sort of at a high conceptual level, but when you actually have to figure out how to operationalize this into rules um, under a new program, we need to know how to measure and monitor and enforce whatever obligations we adopt. Um, and that's something where we very much would also like, you know, any feedback from this organization and the individual people that are attending the conference. So with that, um, I'll 